Does anyone ever dip their pan of chocolate into their coffee? It's absolutely stupendous. You should give it a go if you haven't. Okay, so getting on with the video and looking at the next exercise, which I program a lot of my athletes, is the front foot elevated split squat. So it looks a little bit like this. As the name implies, the front foot elevated split squat is a split squat with our front foot elevated off the ground. Me personally, I like to use 225 kilo plates. Um, and in that sense, it's just the inverse of a Bulgarian split squat. Like any split squat, you wanna keep your feet planted, unlike a lunge, and you wanna be moving your torso up and down vertically. This is just a slight variation on the original split squat. So now you wanna know what are the benefits of the front foot elevated split squat and why do I think that athletes should use it more often? Firstly, the front foot elevated split squat taps into all the benefits of single leg training, as I will summarize here. Number one, the bilateral deficit. So for most activities, humans move one leg at a time. What this means is that our nervous system is very efficient at moving one leg at a time. That's why the amount of strength on each leg individually is greater than when we have our two legs together. Number two, we can use lower weights to get the same training effect or an even better training effect. And what's more is we can also spare our spine from high compression. And number three, we can address our imbalances because unilateral training or single leg training is great for assessing and correcting any differences between both sides of the body. So this is great for injury rehabilitation and also injury prevention. Okay, so we've summarized the benefits of single leg training. I'm now gonna look at why I think the front foot elevated split squat is an awesome exercise. Okay, so for anyone that struggles to hit depth in their squat, this is a great squat variation that will open up our hips and allow us to increase our range of motion. Okay, for example, when you look at my squat, I can squat down to about 90 degrees where my hips and my knees are in line with each other. But when I use a front foot elevated split squat, my range of motion will exceed 90 degrees when my back knee touches the ground. So as you can see, my knee is now above my hip. What this also does is it shortens our quad more, so it places it in a weaker position, which means that we don't need to use as much weight to get the same training effect. What a lot of people forget is that when we strength train with certain exercises, like the front foot elevated split squat, other variations of squatting, and for example, press-ups, we can improve our mobility more safely and more effectively than other types of stretching. This is because we're strengthening weak points in our new ranges of motion. What good is having new ranges of motion in static stretching if they're weak and susceptible to injury. So while the front leg will get deeper into the hip flexor, the back leg will get deeper into hip extension, which will stretch and strengthen the hip flexor and quad at new angles. Because most jobs nowadays are office-based, if you're a living human in the 21st century, you've most likely got tight hip flexors. Using strength exercises that improve your mobility can help prevent a lot of the problems associated with tight hip flexors, whether that's bad posture or an anterior pelvic tilt. You can load up the movement using dumbbells, kettlebells, or barbells. When it comes to the exercise, always use a stable surface. Aim for six to 12 reps on each leg. And when you perform the exercise, make sure that you're thinking about being an elevator, so coming straight vertically up and down, rather, than being an escalator where we come forward. This is Matt from ST Strength. Leave a comment or send me a message if you need any further help.